Welcome back and hello if you are new. So thank you so much for tuning in to my channel where I geek out about all things metal. I hope that all of you guys are doing well and it seems that things are slowly but surely getting better. Now, hardcore has always resonated with me so much more emotionally than many of the other subgenres in the world of, you know, alternative and metal. Now, I've been through some of probably the most difficult problems in my life when I was a bit younger um, with depression and things like that. And weirdly enough, even though I don't necessarily listen to it a whole lot now, hardcore was a, a real kind of um, bit of a, a thread that helped me out um, to overcome those particular times. And a specific album of that is Returners from The Ghost Inside, which is a, you know, it's, it's a really fantastic record and was one of these albums that for some reason I just listened to non-stop every day. Of course, I'm looking back at this with somewhat rose-tinted glasses, but the fact remains is that The Ghost Inside have stayed with me ever since that time. So on November 15th, 2015, the band were involved in a very serious collision Unfortunately, the both drivers in the collision did pass away, but all of the members suffered very, very bad injuries. To even really think that this band would release another album, I think was very, very wishful thinking. And to be honest, you know, I, I honestly didn't think that they would actually come back. Now, fast forward five years later in 2020, and the band have returned. I don't know how they've returned, <laughs> but they have with one of the best albums of their career, which is The Ghost Inside. <laughs> So the first note that you hear on this album is 1333's drums. And I thought that was such an amazing way to kickstart the album because even though a lot of the band, you know, all of them were injured, I feel that the kind of, the future was probably potentially darkest for Andrew, given the fact he's lost a limb, it's such an integral part in playing drums. So to have the album kind of open up with that sound and then you get these kind of like gang vocals of TGI. You really feel that sense of victory and the fact that like, yeah man, like the ghost inside are back. And from then on, it's kind of half an hour of relief, surprise, a bit of sadness, but then absolute joy at the same time. Now, the ghost inside are no strangers to absolutely epic choruses, but I think what the biggest surprise on this self-titled record is Jonathan Vigil's incredible vocal range. Make or Break is a perfect example. It showcases this newfound vocal range to the point where I remember hearing this the first time and I thought that it was Jeremy McKinnon of A Day To Remember, but there is no guest vocals, no nothing. This is entirely Vigil the entire time. Although McKinnon did have a hand in co-producing the record, I will say that. Overexposure is another example of, uh, you know, a classic Ghost Inside song that is destined to be a live staple. There's fantastic melodies in the vocals, but there's also brilliant, brilliant melodies on the guitars as well that really gives it that sort of like uplifting sound. But for me, I think the man of the match in terms of melody has to go to one choice, where despite this being probably kind of, I'd say the most radio-friendly riff the band have ever written, the chorus on this song just will not leave your head. However, as much as there is an element of surprise, there's also a welcome sense of familiarity on The Ghost Inside. And this familiarity returns on a phoenix rise and begin again, which has those quintessential moments of like really fast drums where you could imagine a sort of like circle pits happening and then having such a positive melody behind it that really brought me straight back to that first time I listened to Returners and, and had that sort of emotional connection with the band. Though I have to say there are elements where the guitars at times are kind of changing things up a little bit, like on Make or Break, which has almost kind of like a gent style riff to it, but then also has quite a bouncy sort of sound, which reminded me of like Bury Your Dead and you know, classic hardcore bands like them. However, the band are still pushing the boat out as they create a real sense of narrative with this sort of one and a half minute intro on Unseen, which 
really does create a cinematic sound and also kind of uses electronic beats in there as well before we're kind of brought back into that familiarity of the ghost inside. And as much as I said Phoenix Rise does kind of have a familiarity with it, there's a really nice interlude in there which almost reminded me of like Touche Amore, Death Heaven kind of thing, which I thought was really cool. Then you've got Aftermath, which I honestly think is potentially one of the best songs the band has ever written. It embodies every feeling that's on this album, but also showcases the dynamism of their songwriting. You know, there's not one second of this song which I think is wasted. And it takes you through so many peaks and valleys, emotionally, but also sonically as well. And like, for example, you know, that breakdown where they do the breakdown normally, and then they go even heavier. I didn't kind of expect that. But you six feet deep underground. Um, Pressure Point has probably some of the heaviest stuff I've heard from the band since that sort of Returners era. I, I mean, Get What You Give was pretty heavy as well, and there were moments on Dear Youth for sure, but I really think that Pressure Point goes for that jugular. Yet just as the band are heavy in sound, they are also in emotion, and of course, the story of this record is, is such a big thing and when you actually look through the lyrics there's proof that you can kind of come through the other side on the lyrics for Still Alive. But then there's this kind of rejecting of negativity on Pressure Point and Outcast. But then you have this sort of sense of catharsis in Aftermath. And I think that's a, 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 such a strong message that the band are sending to their fans. The album might not have necessarily broken the mould, but then that's not what this record was about. This is five men who never thought they would even be able to do this again. The language of hardcore is universal, and regardless of where you're from, you know, your sexual orientation, your race, anything like that, all of this is universal. The Ghost Inside have overcome the insane amount of odds that were put towards them and have made an album that transcends languages all over the world and speaks universally to all of their fans. So thank you so much for watching this video review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did learn a little bit more about the band and the self-titled Ghost Inside record, it'd be great if you could hit that like and subscribe button. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a lovely weekend. Be safe and I will see you guys next week for another album review. Take care my friends.